Praise God. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Just Praise Him. I'd like to start off by saying hello to everyone that's out there. Uh, Tom, Karen, Jason, Janice, Mel, Laura, uh, let's see, Michael, Tony, Lupe, James, Stephen, Marty, Juan, Charlotte, Beverly, Victoria, Nikki, Caleb, Mandy, and Phil. <laughs> Um, a special hello to Tracy and Candy. Um, as you may know, his brother Tim passed away this week. It was it was very sad. But at least he's in heaven right now, uh, free of pain and discomfort, having a great time with his mom and dad and, and Jesus. And anyway, I dedicate this message to him, to Tim, a great man who will be missed. Now... <clears throat> Remember, if you want to get a hold of us, you can reach us by email at justpraisem1 at gmail.com. Or you can use regular mail at justpraisem, P.O. Box 305, Mount Pleasant, PA, 15666. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you now. I pray that my tongue be as a pen of a ready writer, speaking a word in season. I pray that this is good ground, and I thank you for, for much fruit that, that it will reap. Father, I pray for the hearer. I pray that they may be blessed, that the words that I speak be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Proverbs 18.21 in the Passion Translation reads, Your words are so powerful that they will kill or they will give life. And the talkative person will reap the consequences. We spend so much of our time talking. We talk about this and we talk about that. And we will spend most of our time talking of nonsensical things. Things that, well, things that don't matter things that are not important. We will talk about anything and everything. This is why Proverbs 17, uh, 27 through 28 says, he who has knowledge spare his words and the man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. We should be practicing silence, the art of being quiet. It would be so nice to meditate in peace and quiet, learning to be still. But since that is such a foreign concept to us, we talk. We talk excessively. Proverbs 18.21 reminds us that our words are so powerful, they, they carry weight. They are to be used wisely not just thrown out there. In fact, it says that they will kill or give life. The words that we speak will either give life to something or kill it right where it stands. This is why we have to be careful with what we say. This is why one of my pet peeves is how we speak to kids. One thing that, that irritates me to no end is when they call a kid dumb or stupid, or, or if they say something like, they're never gonna amount to anything. Man, it fires me up. It, it, it's like Proverbs 15, one and two. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of the fools pours forth foolishness. I mean, don't they know that the words like that will resonate in, in, in the poor child? I mean, instead of speaking life, speaking affirmative speech over the child, these people choose to speak negatively about them, not knowing that they will get what they speak. Lord God, I speak over anybody who has had to endure this kind of talk right now. 
I speak life to those people. I, I speak power and victory over them. I speak words of encouragement over them, that they are smart, well-rounded, successful, good people. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen and amen. I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I just had to do that. Well, anyway, our words are powerful. It's like Confucius said, without knowing the force of words, it is impossible to know more. Words can order our days and call into effect those things that aren't in effect. Mark 11, 12 through 14 and 20 to 24 talk about Jesus and the fig tree. Now let's read. I, I, I'll read from the Passion Translation, okay? It reads, The next day as he left Bethany, Jesus felt hungry. He noticed a, lif a leafy fig tree in a distance. So he walked over to see if there was any fruit on it. But there was not none, only leaves, for it was yet the season for, being, for bearing figs. Jesus spoke to the fig tree, saying, No one will ever eat fruit from you again. And the disciples overheard him. In the morning, they passed by the fig tree that Jesus spoke to, and it was completely withered from the roots up. Peter remembered and said to him, Teacher, look, that that fig tree you cursed, it's now all shriveled up and dead. Jesus replied, Let the faith of God be in you. Listen to the truth I speak to you. Whoever says to this mountain with great faith and does not doubt, the mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea, and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. This is the reason I urge you to boldly believe for whatever you ask for in prayer. Be convinced that you have received it, and it will be yours. Now, I want to point out here that Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Later on, Peter said he cursed it, but the scripture here clearly states he spoke to it. I know it sounds like semantics, but it is important for the purpose of this study to understand that Jesus didn't curse it. He wasn't mad or anything. He had simply noticed that there was no fruit on the fig tree. Actually, the fig tree had lied to him. You see, that fig tree only showed its leaves when there's fruit on the tree. But it was not the season for figs yet. So there should have been no leaves. So when Jesus walked up to it, he said he was expecting to receive some of its fruit. But it lied to him. It did not have any fruit. So Jesus spoke to it. He said, nobody is going to eat fruit, you lying plant. <laughs> he, he, and, and he walked off, not giving it a second thought, not worrying about that plant again. It wasn't until the next day when the disciples saw it that they noticed that what Jesus had said to the fig tree had come to pass. Now remember, Jesus didn't think about it again. He had said what he had said, and he had meant what he said. So why even give it a second thought? The disciples, however, were astonished that the fig tree had dried up and felt the need to bring it to his attention. Jesus simply replied, have faith, or have the God kind of faith. He was telling them to do things like God would do, you know. Remember, your words carry with it power, power to get things done. He said, if you say to this mountain to be moved, it, it will do it. It will listen to you. The problem, the worry, the fear, all you have to do is speak. Speak the words of God over it. Speak the words of faith over it and then leave it alone. 
Don't go back and revisit it. Don't go back and relive it. Just speak the word. Does not matter the size. Does not matter. It doesn't make a difference if, if, if it's big or small. Doesn't matter if, if the size is a little hill or a mountain. Just speak to it and it will obey you. Uh, like Pastor Dave used to say. Stop telling God your problem and start telling your problem about God. You know, your words are full of power. So watch what you allow to slip across your lips. Proverbs 3.3 3 in the Amplified says, The one who guards his mouth, thinking before he speaks, protects his life. The one who opens his lips wide and chatters without thinking, comes to ruin. The Passion states it this way. Guard your words, and you'll guard your life. But if you don't control your tongue, it will ruin everything. See, the balance of life and death are in the tongue, in the words that we speak. We can move mountains, we can speak life. We have the power in us. Don't speak the problem, speak the solution. Don't, don't speak negatively over your situation. Think positively. Speak positively. Speak positively over your situation. We should pray with the psalmist prayed in Psalms 141.3. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. We, we should keep such, such scriptures in, in the forefront. Scriptures like Proverbs 20, 21, 23, which states, Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Or a verse, uh, or, or verse in Matthew 15, 11, that says, no, what, not, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, what comes out of the mouth defiles a man. Or Matthew 4, uh, 12, 34, you brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Luke 6, 45, which says, a good man out of a good treasure of his heart brings forth good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Or 1 Peter 3.10. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. And in Colossians 4.6, uh, we see it says, Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. And how about Ephesians 4.29 It states, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and necessary for edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Let's put a guard on our lips, on our words. Let, let's speak the words that give life. Let us, speak, let us speak like God speaks. Let us speak positive that our words be encouraging to the hearer, that our words be used to build people up, that our words move mountains. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today. I know I have sinned, fallen short of your glory. But I believe in the Lord Jesus. I believe that he was tortured. He was beaten so that I can be made whole. I believe he went to the cross and that blood that he shed was from my sins, washing me clean. I believe, Lord, that you raised him from the dead. 
I believe that he sits on the throne. I accept him as Savior and Lord. I receive my salvation. I receive my righteousness. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. I'll see you next week.